Good morning, and um, here we are in the uh, in the wee small hours, half past one, um, and I've just opened up the Highland um, three amp PSU kit um, that uh, came from Banggood, and uh, just basically sorting out the components and. Uh, having a look at uh, doing a quick build of this so that um, so that it might be used as a driver in the main PCB project uh, a PSU project, not PCB project, what am I talking about a um, couple of things I've noticed about this kit although everything is marked on the board um, they seem to now have started omitting marking the components as to what they are um, now that's fine if you know your resistor color code um, or you want to sit there and uh, measure every component before you put it in the board but um, for those that uh, are used to just sort of uh, saying oh they're the 47k resistors and bonk 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 and that's the what's it resistor bonk 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 and just putting them in um, it makes it a little bit more difficult, so um, it's it's just a minor annoyance. Um, you know, for me, I can look at the resistors and I can say, yeah, I know what that is, I know what that is. Um, is it a lunchtime build? I couldn't really class it as a lunchtime electronics build. I don't know. It might take a, it might take a little bit longer, but it's all standard size components. There's no micro sized bits as in the um the the led spectrum analyzer thing that we did recently um that's you, you know um where do we start i suppose you know we, we, we can start with the resistors and uh or the diodes some of the diodes anyway we've got, i'm sure we must have Zeners in there as well as uh, ordinary diodes without uh, checking. Uh, see, even I struggle with these. Uh, so One, two. They're going to have to use the micro microscope part. Five, five. Okay, they look like five volt zeners. Five, five V one. Five volt. Yeah, yeah, five volt. They're, they're pair of Zena diodes. These are probably one in one four one eight. Four eight four one four eight, yes. So these are standard diodes, they're a pair of Zena diodes, as are those standard diodes. Um big resistor, that one's obvious, big power chip. 7, 8, 24, 24 volt regulator. Ah, now that's interesting. Um, there was a lot of talk on the internet about the original prototype of this being used with different transformers and it blowing up the uh, the op amps, these um, 07, what have we got? 081s, TL 081s. Um, blowing them up because these are only rated at about 36 volts and if you used a big transformer that could do about 26 27 volts by the time you'd rectified it you'd gone over the voltage rating on these op amps which seemed to like sticking to my finger um, it's not sticky from the flux before um, so uh, it looks like they're actually supplying the ICs from a dedicated 24 volt um, regulator there um, 
which makes sense because that way it doesn't matter what transformer you throw on the end of it then um, the board will be limited to its 24 volts and the swing on the uh, ICs will remain within specification which actually makes it um, quite a bit more reliable than uh, than the, the designs that are floating around on the internet based on the same board or this is based on one version of the, the board that's talked about a lot on the internet. So I suppose the thing to do is get started. Um, let's have a look. Um, what are these five? I see these are five band resistors which are Oh, I can't see, I can't even tell the colours on these. Um, let's say brown, black, black, which is one zero zero, which is a hundred with two more zeros, which is a thousand, which is ten thousand, which makes them ten K resistors. Um, I'm going to check that. Uh, not that I don't trust my my memory, but um, it's always it's always nice to see whether these are actually quality components. Now I know you could laugh because they are from China, um, but they they've got a brown tolerance ring, which usually means sort of one percent. Let's have a look. Nine point. 9.95k so they are pretty close to the 10k specified hmm okay so uh, my eyes weren't deceiving me um, I think I'll start with the 10k resistors and so everywhere I see a 10k I will just uh, plonk one in the hole Uh, as I say, not to make this an epic or anything, I won't won't do a, a full live step-by-step -step build. I think we'll just uh, do it in fits and stages. You, you, you really don't want to see me soldering all the time, do you? Um, let's just put these in and uh, hopefully everything will go according to plan. And... Um, We'll have a working board. Let's just take a few more of these off. One, two, so that's 10k there as well. And 10k there as well. I've got to say the PCB is actually very good quality. And I did notice that uh, on one of the two sites, whether it be Ali or Banggood, these kits, I think it's probably bang good. These kits are down to four pounds each. So um, if you do hurry, um, you could get a bargain. Uh, you certainly couldn't buy these components in the UK for four pounds. I'll tell you that now. I know for a fact you couldn't buy all these components for four pounds. Um, it, it's it's just impossible. So um, yeah. That's it. Flip that board over. That's it. We've got them all. And just get that little piece of solder that's laying around. And we'll just do a quick solder up. And then uh, while I sit here and uh, try and work out what the rest of the resistors are by trying to read the colour code because of the uh, the wonderful numbers on blue that they seem to like using on these new resistors. I much preferred the old beige ones for some reason. You could read the colours much more clearly. Uh, cutters, just chop these legs off. Um, but anyway, um, I'll leave it there for a moment. I'll see you back uh, once I've put all these bits and pieces in and um, got it all ready to go. See, I've missed one there. So I'll see you uh, shortly uh, once I've soldered uh, the rest of these bits together and um, we can then go for some uh, fun and games playing with mains into this, into uh, into a meter and see what happens. Thanks very much. Bye bye.
Right, okay, um, back again. There we go. Um, I've got to say, that was a lot easier to solder up than um, many surface mount kits, and it's only taken me, it's only taken me, uh, what's it, about uh, 45, 50 minutes to get to this stage. Uh, and there's a good reason why I've actually stopped at this stage. Um, as you can see, there are two main components not soldered on the board. And um, at this point, the reason I stopped was because this voltage regulator, this 24 volt regulator, which should go about there, really does need a heat sink. Um, there's no mention of it in any of the online stuff that I've seen. Um, I don't know what they expect you to connect it to, but it does need a heat sink. And in the in the sales blurb, it does say you need to buy a heat sink and fan for this one. Now that's all well and good, um, but it also says you need to buy a transformer, and uh, doesn't say anything about a box or anything like that. Now, strictly speaking, you don't need to put it in a box. You can run it like this. Um, it also assumes you're going to get a 24 volt fan. Now, luckily enough, I have got a 24 volt fan. Um, but uh, it, it, it's niggly things like that that make it um, a bit more annoying as a kit, shall we say. Um, what else would I change? Uh, well, these, these pots, they don't come with any sort of heat shrink or sleeving of any type um, to stop these wires shorting out which again to me is a bit wrong um, you know that's something that you do yourself um, I certainly if I, if I was uh, designing this myself you know normally I would put heat shrink on there or I'd put some um, element sleeving or something just to uh, just to finish that bit off um, it, it's, it just seems wrong to leave them just hooked up to bare wires. Uh, the other thing I would change is I would actually socket these ICs. Um, not that there's anything wrong with soldering direct to the board, but if you ever need to change them, um, then it's far easier to do it with uh, a socket. You just pull, pull it out the socket and uh, away you go, plug in your new one. And uh, as long as there's no continuing fault on the thing, um, it should run just as happily as it did before. Um, it, it, it's just minor things like this that, I don't know, take it out of the absolute beginner kit stage. And um, that's unfortunate because a, a bench power supply is a fundamental part of electronics and you really do need one of some description um, whenever you're going to make anything. You need, you know, unless you plan to run on batteries or cell phone adapters all the time, um, which isn't, isn't practical. You, you really do need a, a current limiting um, adjustable voltage power supply of some description. Um, now it says to feed AC into here at 24 volts. Now I have the ability to do that, but if you don't have a transformer, um, you've got to then, you know, find your transformer. Now I've got two ways of doing it. I can either run it straight off uh, my Variac and measure 24 volts and stick it in there um, or I can uh, get the uh, the big transformer that I am going to use for the um, power supply project and put that uh, you know put that in there and that's that's you know it, it's what I can do but it, it's not what everybody can do so you know you are looking at buying a transformer um, also, I, I, I probably wouldn't have put a screw socket on there. Um, I would have probably gone for soldering direct to the board, um, simply because you know that's another point of failure where a wire can come out, or if you've got you know 
careless whiskers of wire flicking and touching each other. You, you develop a short, you blow your fuse further up the line, uh, and the same with the output. Um, you, if you're planning on putting this in a box like most people would, you would actually have the output wires going straight off to a pair of uh, four mil terminal posts and um, and something along those lines. Uh, as as for these, um, yes, you'd have a great big heat sink. Uh, let's have a look. I've got a great big heat sink for two hands. Um, no, that's too small. Um, I did have that. Ah, there we are. That's what I was looking for. Yeah, I've got a spare XCPU heatsink, which uh, I don't know what that thread is, uh, but is it for those screws? Um, yes, it is. So I could, in theory, just uh, yeah, let's, let's have a go. Um, bolt that into there. But they don't say whether this has to be isolated or not, and the screw isn't even long enough to go through the IC. You know, they, they, minor details. How are you meant to mount that to a heatsink? Um, does it have to be isolated from the heatsink? Does it have to be isolated from the case? Um, I know it does, but you know. Your average home builder will just put the kit together as they say, and unless they buy the official Banggood heatsink um, fan kit for it, um, you really take pot luck. Um, you, you know, it's, you know, what is the official heatsink? Is it this size? Is it big enough? Is it, um, you know? Does it have to be in a metal box? Do you have to insulate the back of this from the back of this? You couldn't you put both of these on the casing? You know, most people wouldn't know that sort of information when they're just starting out in electronics, and um, it could ruin the experience for them. So, uh, as a kit, yes, it's a great little kit. It, it's it's easy to put together. But the severe lack of documentation really lets it down. Um, um, I think it, it's one of those that will need a lot of backup and support. So um, I'm not going to say it's a beginner's kit, even though the actual assembly is beginner's level. Um, once, you, once you follow your colour codes, resistors go straight in. Um, uh, even, even, yeah, there's another point. Um, take that out. These are high wattage resistors. Um, now, as you see, I've mounted these above the board. Um, absolute beginner would have just shoved them straight down, laid them flat on the surface. And the problem with doing that, I'll bring it up close for you, uh, see if I can uh, get a focus. Can you get a focus? Yeah, there we go. Um, the problem with doing that, if these get hot, these will start to char the board. And, um, you know, when things start getting hot and burning and charring, it's, it's not a nice experience. You tend to get the electric smoke coming out. And, um, you know, why you would want to uh, have that happen um, is beyond me. Uh, also, you have a pot here to set up. It's actually for maximum current limiting. But again, no information. Um, I'm just going to bring it down to the desk again. So, there we go. Um, yeah. Uh, as a kit, five stars. Um, documentation, zero. You, you have to hunt for the documentation. And um, it's, it's not really something that's documented very well as a kit. Um, certainly the original design is uh, documented well, but this introduces some of the changes that um, that have been made um, for ease of construction and, and the fact that you can put any old transformer in it and any old um, you know, sort of uh, AC supply and heat sink and fan on the end of it. So you know, it needs more explanation 
uh, I think, as to what it's suitable for. Um, so as a kit, um, on the whole, uh, I think I've got to rate it at three stars. Uh, as I say, the board quality is excellent, the printing is excellent, uh, the components, um, they are your standard components, you know, there's nothing really that you can say for or against them, but the niggles um, with the documentation, the lack of uh, heat shrink there, the wrong size screws on the, on the power device, um, they're what let it down. And uh, so uh, at this point, as I say, I think, um, I think three out of five is uh, the rating I'd give it. Three out of five. Thanks very much for watching. Bye bye for now.